Greetings, one and all, and welcome to episode number 55 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. That's right, your boy Stoney is back for the 55th time, and I'd like to welcome all of my favorite who and my fellow hoodlums, cheats, low-life hustlers, sco- scumbags, fienders, degenerates, and by popular demand and by viewer request, criminals, perverts, virgins, horn dogs, jerk offs, jihadists, and altar boys, and especially Catholic altar boys who have very peculiar relationships with their priests. You know who I'm talking to: Cruz, Donnie, Matt. Yeah, I know. All, all you, all you Italians and Irishmen. I know how you guys roll. Anyway. That's neither here nor there. Coming off another winning week. What are you going to do? Okay. Before you start. Oh, Stoney went 0-4. Stoney went 0-4. Yeah, I went 0-4 on the sides of the NFL action. Went 2-4 and on the totals. That's 2-6. and Yes. Terrible. My worst NFL uh, week of the entire season was last week. But you know how you offset that? By going 15-7 and seven in college basketball. 15-4 and four at one point before losing the last three games on the board, including the Degenerate Special, which hurt because I was 15-4 and four at one point and wound up going 17-13 and 13 on the week. So anyway, 17-13 and 13 is still 56%. That's a winning week. We'll take it if... That's our worst winning week of the last five, which were all winning weeks. Yes, that's our fifth consecutive winning week, right? Three losing weeks all season. Three. And two of them were way back at the beginning of the season. So it just goes to show you the amount of content that I drop in your lap every single week for free. And now listen to these numbers. NFL playoffs were 9-11. Okay, 45% so far. NCAA basketball. Last week, 15 and 7, 93 and 56 on the season right now. That's good for 62.42%. Yeah, 62%. All right. NFL regular season, 64%. Bulls, 62%. NCAA football, 58%. Add it all up 435 wins. 279 losses and two pushes for a grand total of 60.92%. 61% out of 700 selections that I've given you for free, 700 selections, and I'm sitting just a hair below 61%. I challenge anybody in the world to do that. Give 700 plays in five months, not even. Yeah, yeah, four or five months, right? And try to top that. You can't because nobody can, right? So before you start knocking my 0-4 day, right, all of you DJs that work for the Raiders, right, and I need my NFL picks. Nobody cares about college basketball until March. Really? Well, you would have cared about college basketball if you listened to my picks last week because you would have made money. That's right. And then for all of you, oh, your word lock is meaningless, right? Those are for you retired feds, right, who are just, A, learning how to gamble, who don't know shit about sports, and don't say nothing when their teams lose. Eh, what are you going to do? You know, these types of people, they're comical, right? They make me work harder so I can just, bang, drop it right on them. And that's what we're going to do right now. Y'all ready? Welcome to the NFC cha- welcome to the NFL Conference Championship edition of Thoughts and Hunches making money in bunches and sucker punches. Why do I bury the NFL at the end? Because there's money on the streets that can't be ignored. So why ignore college basketball? This is our bread and butter. This is where we, where I make money for you all season long, no doubt. No questions asked. We'll start with college basketball like we always do. My dog's getting loose out there. You hear him? I don't know if you hear him, but that's Jay getting loose. 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, ACC action. Used to be called McCamish Pavilion. Now it's the Thriller Dome. Georgia Tech is 9-10, and 10, and they're hosting 15-5 and 5 Miami, Florida, who comes in as two-and-a-half-point favorites. 
Miami uh, only has two conference losses, and that they're both the Florida State, right? They bounced back from a loss last week to Florida State with an improbable last-second win over Virginia Tech, where they trailed by three with three seconds le- with like seven seconds left and won the game by three with a miracle off shot off the glass from about half court to win it. Anyway, they they uh, they beat Va Tech, and here against Georgia Tech, a team that has won three straight all because of Michael DeVoe. Mike DeVoe, right, uh, and he's been sticking it to Miami because last three times out against Miami, Georgia Tech has won, and Mike DeVoe's averaged 24 per. So Georgia Tech's coming off their biggest win of the season, which was over Florida State, the team that has beaten Miami twice. So Georgia Tech can probably boast that they're playing their best ball of the season. Miami's been fairly been very consistent, though. Jim Laranega has built a program, he's built a culture, and he's got a good team. He doesn't have a great team, but he's got a very good team that's winning a lot of games and is sitting atop the ACC right now. So Miami's two and a half point favorites. I'm going to take the Canes and lay them on the road at McCamish or the Thriller Dome, whatever you want to call it. 12 p.m. Eastern time at Belk Arena in Davidson. You got 16 and 3 Davidson as 13 and a half point favorites against 6 and 11 LaSalle. The Explorers right now just can't seem to get out of their own way. They've lost five out of six. Davidson, on the other hand, has had won 15 straight until they just lost on Wednesday night to Virginia Commonwealth in a in a very close game, very good one, but it but it stop their 15 15 game winning streak but here they're going to bounce back they're 13 and a half they're at home it may seem like a big number but just lamb because LaSalle's just a mess right now noon eastern time ACC action the KFC Yum Center about three hours north of here in Louisville Louisville's 11 and 9 they've lost five out of six assistant coach Mike Peggy's is taking over now after the Firing, not firing, quitting, not quitting, mutual separation of Chris Mack. And uh, Chris Mack will land on his feet. He's too good of a coach, but he will land on his feet somewhere. In the meantime, Louisville has assistant coach Mike Peggy's now while they look for a real head coach. And they're at home as eight and a half point dogs against ninth ranked Duke, who comes in at 16 and three, winners of six and six out of seven. This one could get ugly and will get ugly. Duke wins by double digits and going away. Lay the eight and a half. Jay is just, Jay is barking up a storm out there right now. Hang on, give me a second here. Uh, All right, moving on to the Big 12 SEC shootout. A lot of games from this uh, shootout. A lot of good matchups, including the game of the day later on. But you'll see how I've... uh, I got action on a lot of them. Noon Eastern time, uh, Schollmeyer Arena, Fort Worth, Texas. This this one right here is purple against purple. It's it's sorry, I got to get my yeah. There we go. It's purple against purple. It's TCU at home, three and a half point dogs against sixteen and four, nineteenth ranked LSU. LSU comes in uh, as losers of uh they had lost three in a row right but they just beat texas a&m the other night even though they didn't cover so as far as i'm concerned they lost four in a row and uh tcu on the other hand isn't playing all that well either they're two and three and they've lost two out of three before they won six out of seven so they were playing well but that uh, losers two out of three doesn't bode well but they're at home they're three and a half point dogs LSU comes in. Do I like the Tigers? Of course not. Everybody knows that. I mean, who could possibly like LSU? Please. Bunch of disasters down in the Cajun country. Forget about it. LSU loses. LSU loses outright. Lock of the day. TCU plus three and a half. Moving on. 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Big 12 action. Michigan, Michigan State. Doesn't get any better than this. 10 and 7 Michigan goes into the Breslin Center in East Lansing 
and they take on 15 and 4 and 10th ranked Michigan State, who's four and a half point favorites. Michigan, it's they've won three in a row. They seem to have righted the ship after a miserable first two months of the season. Well, Hunter Dickinson is what makes this team go. He's the big man. He's he does it all, and and the whole offense kind of revolves around him defensively as well. Where Michigan State, on the other hand, it's a classic Tom Izzo team. Just think Draymond Green. That's what they are. They don't have bigs, but they have guys that are big enough. They don't have speed, but they have guys that are quick enough. They don't have a go-to guy that can score 18 a game, but they have four guys averaging in double figures. Classic Tom Izzo. Give me Michigan State. Lay the four and a half at home. Um, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Big 12 SEC. Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. Arkansas comes in as 15 at 15 and five. They're eight and a half point favorites against 13 and six West Virginia. West Virginia's lost four straight. They were 13 and two, and Huggy Bear was uh, was ranked. Now he's lost four in a row, and those four games were bad blowout losses. I mean, yeah, the Big 12's tough, and some of those losses were to schools that are no joke. But when you're losing big and losing to those schools, a lot of those games they weren't even in. They're starting to sound the alarm bell in Morgantown, right? Doesn't matter, you know, Huggy Bear's safe. He's not going anywhere. But West Virginia needs to right the ship. And going into Fayetteville right now is not good because uh, uh, in steps Eric Musselman, who missed two or three games with a bad shoulder that he got when he ran into one of his players during practice. But he's back. The Hogs have won five straight. They're 15 and five. They're going to be ranked when they win this one. So Arkansas, they're at home, eight and a half. Lay them. Lay them all. Seems like I'm taking a lot of favorites today. Well, yeah, I kind of am. Anyway, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Big East action in Omaha. Creighton versus Xavier. Creighton's at home. They're 12 and six. And they're two point dogs against 21st ranked and 14 and five Xavier. The Musketeers, though, even though they're ranked 21st, they're they're barely hanging on. They've lost three out of five. They're not really playing that well. Now, Creighton, on the other hand, has split their last four. They've won two. They lost two. But that was without uh, head coach, uh, I was going to say Doug McDermott, Greg McDermott, Doug's father. Greg McDermott is back from COVID protocol. Expect Creighton to play with a more spirited effort. I like Creighton plus the points, but I also like Creighton on the money line. There's outright winner Creighton money line play 2 p.m. Eastern time ACC action at the Dean Dome in upstate New York not upstate New York that's the Carrier Dome the Dean Dome's in North Carolina excuse me let me get my action here together North Carolina versus North Carolina State this one's in Chapel Hill Carolina's 14 and 6 NC State's 10 and 11 Carolina has won two straight but those wins were over Virginia Tech and BC that was after they lost two straight to Wake and Miami so it goes to show you they lose to the good teams they beat the bad teams well NC State's 10-11, so they ain't very good. They have lost three out of four. Carolina wins, but give me NC State plus the nine and all those points. I'll take the Wolf Pack. Moving on, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. This one is Pac-12 action. It's the basketball version of the Territorial Cup down in Tucson at the McHale Center. Number three ranked Arizona comes in at 16 and two. They will drop from number three when the new rankings come out on Monday after UCLA curb stomped them in Pauley Pavilion the other day. Well, Zona has Tommy Lloyd's in his first year as head coach there, and he must just think like he started the game on third base. I mean, he, in his first year, he got all of disgraced head coach Sean Miller. He got all of his athletes that he recruited. And Sean Miller's not disgraced, but to the media he is because he, oh, he's a recruiter and he did bad and he he cheated. He gave money to DeAndre Ayton. Please. Everybody does. That stuff doesn't bother me. Sean Miller is a great coach, and there's another guy who's going to land on his feet and get a really good job somewhere, just like Rick Pitino has and will continue. Anyway, 
all these coaches that get caught for recruiting violations, whatever, whatnot, I don't care. Right, Sean Miller is a great coach. Anyway, Arizona, uh, Tommy Lloyd's done a phenomenal job, and the biggest thing that he inherited was Benedict Matherin. This kid is just instant offense. If you haven't seen Arizona play, you need to. Matherin is will be in the running for a Naismith Award. He may not get it, but he's going to be up there. He's he's definitely a uh, a first or second team All American this year. So expect to see him with a lot of postseason awards, including possibly the Pac-12 Player of the Year, which right now it looks like it's just him and Johnny Juzang from UCLA. But anyway, Benedict Matherin, uh, Arizona, 21.5-point favorites uh, at home against Arizona State. Arizona State's head coach Bobby Hurley's been suspended. This game has just got Arizona written all over it, which is why I like ASU. Give me all 21 and a half of those points. Zona wins. Zona wins easily. Zona State covers. That's for you, Lugo. Moving on. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the Xfinity Center in College Park, Maryland. Indiana versus Maryland. Indiana's 15-5. and five. And here's another one. Sean Miller's brother, Archie Miller, was fired from Indiana. For what? For not winning, right? Archie Miller, another very, very good coach. Him and his brother are both unemployed and are doing a podcast right now, right? But in the meantime, you got Indiana, who has two, possibly three NBA-ready players on the floor right now. That's why they're 15-5. and five. The problem that they're having, they can't win on the road. Indiana just can't. Well, here they're in College Park. Maryland's 11-9, and nine, which ain't too great, but they're, they've won three out of five. They're playing their best ball of the season, and they're one-and-a-half-point dogs here. Give me the one-and-a-half. Give me Maryland on the money line, and watch the Terps cover. That's right. Fear the turtle. 4 p.m. Eastern time. Big 12 SEC channel, the uh, challenge, the Coleman Coliseum down in Tuscaloosa. You got uh, Baylor versus Bama. Fourth ranked Baylor, 18 and 2, two point favorites over 13 and 7. Bama, Baylor right now. They were number one, then they lost two in a row to knock them from the number one rank down to number four. But since then, they've they're back. They've won three in a row. Bama's lost three out of five. And during that three out of five, one of their wins was was over LSU. And we all know that that don't mean anything because LSU's almost as bad as an LSU fan is. So anyway, uh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. So because of that, we're going to take Baylor and lay the two. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Big East action at the Pavilion in Stony Delphia. You've got St. John's versus Villanova. Nova is 14th ranked. They're 15 and 5, and they're 12 and a half point favorites here against 11 and 7 St. John's, who've lost three out of five. Nova, on the other hand, is ripped off five out of six. Colin Gillespie is playing like the superstar that he is. He's got everything working, and 12 and a half may seem like a big number, especially in conference. Doesn't matter here. There's no risk. Take no Nova lay the 12 and a half. 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Pac-12 action at Heck Ed Arena in C-Town, Seattle, Washington. You get Washington versus Utah. The Huskies are 10 and 8. Utah is 8 and 13, but Utah really just can't seem to find their way. They fired Larry Kristoviak, and I thought that was the worst thing they could have done because I always liked Christo, but they've really fallen on hard times right now. They're 8 and 13. They've lost six in a row. Now they head to Washington, who's only 10 and 8, but they've won four out of five. They're playing their best ball of the season. Give me the hometown Huskies. Lay the one and a half. 6 p.m. Eastern Time, game of the day, Big 12 SEC Challenge, live from the fog. Allen Fieldhouse, historic Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. You've got fifth-ranked Kansas, who's 17-2 and two and five-point favorites over 16-4 and four and 12th-ranked Kentucky. KU versus UK. Classic game. John Calipari got his start in coaching under Larry Brown back in the mid-80s and as an, assist, as an assistant coach. Two years after he left, a graduate assistant by the name of Bill Self came along and was there for uh, the for the national championship in 1988 that featured Danny and the Miracles with Larry Brown. And now 
Bill Self's in his 19th season as the main guy, and we all know how good they are. Well, Calipari versus Self doesn't get any better than this. NBA ready, this is what you got. You got NBA ready players, right? Let me quick a quick diversion here. My brother, and a lot of you people here know my brother, calls me every every Saturday. I can't watch this game. I can't watch it. The shooting is awful. They just can't make a shot. This is a guy who watches the NBA where nobody plays defense, right? And he doesn't understand the, the dynamic between playing defense and not playing defense. The NBA, there's no defense. That's why the final score of every game is 140 to 130. It's insane. You want to be a millionaire? Bet every single game over. Every single game over. You'll hit 70% of the overs in the NBA. Right? College basketball, I don't know if it, the same goes with the under, but I try to explain to him that the only way you get to play in college is if you defend. If you don't defend, you don't play. So that's why these guys got to play. Well, what I'm getting at is UK versus KU. The, the, these are two teams that defend like son of bitches. All right? There's five to six players that are NBA ready now. There are seven to eight players on both these rosters that will be in the NBA. So UK and KU are, are factories for the, N, for, for the NBA. Just look around the NBA. That's all you see. Kentucky graduate, well, Kentucky, former K, Kentucky alums and Kansas alums. Not exactly graduates. Anyway, Kansas is five-point favorites, right? The big names here you got to know. Kentucky, Oscar Chibwe, Ty Ty Washington. Those are the motors that make the UK engine run. And as for Kansas, it's O'Shea Abaji, 21 points a game. Christian Braun, 15 points a game. These guys average 36 points a game for teams that win with defense. This game won't be high-scoring, high-flying back and forth. It'll be played in the 60s, maybe the 70s. I like KU. I'm going to lay the five. I do like Kentucky. I still think Kentucky is going to wind up winning the SEC, even though the number one team in the country right now is in the SEC, and it ain't Kentucky. I like Kentucky to win the SEC. But tomorrow, take Kansas, lay the five. Sorry about that digression. 6 p.m. Eastern time, Lubbock, Texas. Big 12 SEC matchup, Mississippi State versus Texas Tech. Texas Tech, even though they lost Chris Beard to Texas, is 13th ranked. They're 15-5. and five. They're still getting it done on defense. They've won three out of five. Mississippi State has also won three out of five. And I'm going to give you a name to listen to. This is a guy who probably won't show up on a lot of All-American lists. If he does, it'll be low like in the third or the honorable mention type. Uh, but he will be in the running for SEC Player of the Year, which he won't get because Oscar Chibwe will probably get it from Kentucky. But Mississippi State Iverson Molinar. Get to know this guy. Remember this name. He's going to be a ball player in the NBA. He's a ball player right now. He's averaging 21 points a game for Ben Hallen down in Stark Vegas. And he's going to keep this game close. Texas Tech wins. Mississippi State covers. Give me the 7.5. 7, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Pack 12 action at the Galen Center in La La Land where everything's phony because it's L.A. Of course, everything's fake. Uh, 17 and three and number 15 ranked USC, who will certainly fall after losing to Stanford. They're 12 point favorites over 9 and 11 Cal. Uh, Cal is just a disaster, right? Again, another disaster, another rebuilding year for the mighty Golden Bears of Berkeley, California. What a wonderful city of Berkeley, California. Yeah. Cal, they're in, I believe it's their 35th year of rebuilding. Yeah, they're in the post-Jason Kidd uh, seasons now, the era, the post-Jason Kidd era, even though he's already in the Hall of Fame. Just insane. Anyway, USC minus 12 against Cal. Lay all 12 of those. They met uh, a couple weeks ago at the beginning of the uh, year, and USC throttled Cal in Berkeley. Forget about the loss to Stanford the other night. USC bounces back and takes it out on Cal because that's what teams do. UCLA did it the other night. They just took out frustrations on Cal, even though UCLA was missing two starters. Didn't matter. Cal's, 
Cal's a disaster. USC's not. Look for them to bounce back. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, American Athletic Conference down in Orlando. This, this one has the makings of being a good matchup. 12 and 6 UCF, winners of three out of five, is at home and hosting seventh ranked Houston, who comes in at 17 and 2. Remember, Houston made the final four last year. Well, they're back at it again. Kelvin Sampson, they've won nine in a row. And remember Marcus Sasser, who led. Uh, Houston to the Final Four last year? Well, he's at it again, too. Marcus Sasser is a stud. He's getting it done, and he's going to lead Houston to an easy win here. Lay the 7.5 on the road. There's your winner. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, ACC action from the Carrier Dome in upstate New York. Syracuse versus Wake Forest. Wake is red hot, 17-4, and four. And they're two-point favorites over the 9 and 11 Qs. The Orangemen, yes, I call them the Orangemen because they always have been the Orangemen. Uh, they're struggling, struggling. They've lost three out of four, not playing well. Uh, they've hit a rough patch. Here's another name for you. I just gave you Iverson Molinar. Here's another name to pay attention to because he won't show up on a lot of the year-end lists, but he will show up in the NBA and he will contribute. The name is Alondis Williams for Wake Forest. He's led them. He's led the Demon Deacons to four straight wins. He leads the Demon Deacons in scoring, rebounding, and assists. He's a goddamn utility knife out there. He does it all. Give me Wake. Lay the two in the Dome. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Big 12 SEC matchup. This is another good one. This one is in Austin. This one's all about the coaches. You got 15-5 and five Texas, two-point favorites at home against 14-5 and five and 18th ranked Tennessee. What does this mean? Rick Barnes, head coach of, T of Tennessee, heads back to Texas, where he spent many years in Texas, won many games, won many NCAA tournament games, but he didn't win enough. So Texas got rid of him, and he landed great in a great spot in Knoxville, where he's turned that program around, and Tennessee has become very good because of it. Texas moved on from Barnes to Shaka Smart, and... And while I'm a huge Shaka fan, he just didn't fit in in Texas. He's doing another great job up in Milwaukee right now at Marquette. But it led Chris Beard to leave Texas Tech and land in Austin. And Chris Beard is another guy who's got Texas to buy into his defensive first system. A, a team my brother would absolutely despise because nobody can score on him. Oh, the shooting's awful. That's what it is. It's called defense. It's defense. I know you don't see it in the NBA. Sorry. It's just it's how it is. It's how certain people are. Give me Tennessee. Take the two on the road. Uh, Tennessee's won four out of five. Uh, Texas won three out of five. One of Tennessee's wins was against LSU. So again, that doesn't really count. It's like beating a junior college because LSU is awful. But give me the... Give me, give me Tennessee plus two. I mean, you know, the volunteers, this one's going to get an uh, outright winner. 9.30 p.m. Eastern. How am I doing on time? There we go. 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Pac-12 action. Stanford versus UCLA. Edwin W. Pauley Pavilion on the campus of UCLA in Westwood, California. The seventh-ranked Bruins. 13 and a half point favorites over Stanford. UCLA's 15 and 2, Stanford's 12 and 6, but Stanford's coming off a big win over USC. Can Stanford do what Oregon did a couple weeks ago and pull off the LA two step? Not going to happen. UCLA wins. Stanford covers, though, because 13 and a half is an awful lot of points. And I like Stanford's athleticism, and they, they seem to be getting it done right now. Jared Haas has them going in the right direction. Give me Stanford plus. Plus all those points. 10 p.m. Eastern time, another Pac-12 matchup. Matthew Knight Arena in Eugene, Oregon. The basketball version of the Civil War, Oregon versus Oregon State. Oregon State's 3-14. and 14. They've lost five straight. They've lost seven out of eight. They're a total disaster right now. Uh, Oregon, on the other hand, is 12-point favorites. They're 12-7 and seven right now. They did lose to Colorado after the four-game winning streak, which included the LA two-step. And 12 points may seem like a lot, especially in conference, but there's no risk here. Oregon State's 3-14. and 14. Oregon wins this game by 20. Lay all 12 of them. Finally, the Degenerate Special. 
the midnight Eastern time. This is for true degenerates because if you're watching the first game off at noon Eastern time and you're watching the last game off that begins at midnight Eastern, you are a degenerate. That's right. Lugo, Donio, Fienders. You guys live for the degenerate special. Well, here you go. If it starts at midnight Eastern time, it's at the Stan Sheriff Center in Stony Lulu, Hawaii. Hawaii, 10 and 5, one and a half point favorites against the 8 and 7 Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara, who've lost three out of four. Hawaii's playing their best ball of the season right now. They've won six straight. Let's take Hawaii for our degenerate special winner. There's 22 college basketball plays for you. I mean, it doesn't get any better now. 22 plays. You know I'm going to go 14 and 8 at least, right? Just like I did last week, I went 15 and 7. So the winners just keep flowing. So jump on them. Jump on them early and hit them, hit them hard. Hit them nonstop. I'm getting a phone call right now from my boy P-Time, uh, an employee for the Raiders. I can't take it because I'm being recorded right now. So P-Time, when you see this video, you'll know that you called me while I'm trying to film my video. Anyway, NFL action. Let's go. 3 p.m. Eastern time, Sunday afternoon, Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, for the fourth straight year. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice. For the fourth straight year, the AFC uh, championship game is being played at Arrowhead. <coughs> Kansas City is Kansas City. You are what you are, right? You know what you're going to get. They finished the season 12 and 5. <coughs> Something didn't work there. Oh, that's a lot better. These two teams met on January 2nd. Right. They met in the Queen City and the jungle in Cincinnati. KC led 28-14 in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati came all the way back. Won the game 34-31. Joe Burrow went crazy. Uh, in the playoffs so far, KC's beat Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Cincinnati's beat Las Vegas and Tennessee. The names are out there. Kansas City. We all saw Buffalo last week. And for those, oh, it was the greatest. No, it wasn't. That Buffalo-Kansas City game made me want to break my television and fire both defensive coordinators. It was awful, right? And then for those of you that say, well, it's not fair that Josh Allen didn't get a chance to touch the ball in overtime. And in the playoffs, they need to change the rules. No, they don't need to change the rule. The rules are fine. You want to get the ball? How about you make a stop on defense, right? We, Buffalo was going to win that game if they won the coin toss. They didn't win the coin toss. They lost. They couldn't get a stop. Why? Because Patrick Mahomes took the ball right down the field like he does against everybody and like he's going to do against Cincinnati, and he's going to put up numbers. He's got Tyreek Hill. He's got Travis Kelsey. He's got St uh, 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 Edwards Alaire. He's got Jarek McKinnon now. It's just, you know, it's starting to it's starting to get scary what they do. But here's where they're in trouble. Their defense is flat out awful. For those of you that look at, oh, they but they've won 11 out of their last 12 and their only loss during that time was to Cincinnati at the Jungle. And there was their defense that carried them. No, no, bullshit. Bullshit. This defense is bad. Their best defensive player is out. And even if he does play, Honey Badger, to, to Ron Matthew, even if he doesn't, LSU grad, even if he does play, he ain't going to be right. He's going he's gonna to have visions of Jamar Chase, you know, running by him, and Higgins, and Mixon, and Uzoma. It's just, it, it Joe Burrow is the missing link here, right? I'm not saying they win the game, but Cincinnati is going to score and they're going to keep scoring. If they can get a break, 
a tipped ball, a sack fumble, a blocked punt like the Niners got last week, a punt return, a kickoff return, something out of the ordinary that puts them in the lead and makes the Chiefs play catch up, the Chiefs will be in trouble because the, def the, the Chiefs defense is terrible. It's absolutely awful, period. Give me Cincinnati plus the seven and a half all day long. Over 54 and a half. Both teams are going to light up the scoreboard. We know that. It's AFC football. What are you going to do? They don't believe in defense. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NFC Championship Game, SoFi Stadium, the site of the Super Bowl. Niners versus Rams, old school rivalry are meeting in the second championship game. They met back in 1989. 49ers beat them on their way to another Super Bowl win. The Rams are, thir are, are 12 and 5, and the Rams are the best team money can buy, period, right? They spend their money. They get rid of all their draft picks. They don't have another draft choice until, I believe, the year 2037. And, you know, they've got the players, period. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, left tackle, he's the question mark whether or not he's going to play. They, he's been practicing, so he's going to probably play. But his, his job is to block Nick Bosa. Good luck. Um, Matt Stafford, no running game. You can talk all you want about their disaster of a running game, which is not going to work against the 49ers. It didn't work last week against Tampa Bay. It's not going to work against the 49ers. It never does, right? So it's going to be Stafford just slinging it. He's going to throw the ball 50 times. Uh, Cooper Cup and OBJ and Higby and all these guys. Fine, fine, I get it. But I like the 49ers, and here's why. For those of you that want to try to call me a homer, you know I'm not a homer because I took the pack last week, all right? DJ Frankie boy trying to call me a homer, right? Well, I'm back on the Niners this week. Eve, the Niners have won six straight over the Rams. That's irrefutable, right? The 49ers are 9-3 and three against the spread in their last 12 against L.A. Yep, yep. Jimmy. Love him, hate him. He's a winner. Elijah Mitchell. People don't know who he is, but he puts up 80, 90 yards in every game, right? Debo, everybody knows Debo now. He's the most versatile player and the most dangerous player in the NFL, right? George Kittle, ever heard of him? Brandon Ayuk. Then there's the defense, and this is why I like the 49ers. For all of you that have been talking about Aaron Donald and the Rams defense and Jalen Ramsey and Oh, you know, all these players. And they, I just don't see how the 49ers, how Jimmy G is going to be able to score. It's not up to Jimmy G. 49ers are going to run, their, run the ball down their throats like they always do, right? While these pass rushers are shooting up the ends, boom, there goes Elijah right by you. Gain of seven, right? Get used to seeing that. The 49ers are bullies offensively and defensively. For for years, I grew up listening to the 49ers as the wine and cheese eating, pinky in the air, right? While the Raiders were the tough, tough team in the Bay Area, and they were the bullies, and they took no shit. That's the 49ers, and that's how the 49ers have been doing it for the last four years, right? They do it with a defense that doesn't blitz because they don't have to. Their defense gets to the quarterback by rushing four. Their front seven is the best in football. They have probably the best middle linebacker in football. <laughs> the Rams will not be able to run the ball. Matt Stafford is best when he's up against the blitz. He's not going to see any blitzes because the 49ers don't need to blitz. In the last three weeks, the 49ers have physically assaulted Aaron Rodgers at home. Dak Prescott at home, and yes, Matt Stafford at home. Three weeks ago, when Matt Stafford was limping and was walking off the field at, so at SoFi, limping and just hurting after he threw one of his two picks to end the game in overtime that they lost again to the Niners, who've won six straight. Make it seven straight. 
49ers win surprisingly easily because the Rams aren't going to score into the 20s. That's just not going to happen in this one. 49ers win. 49ers win easily. Give me under 45 and a half. So I've got Bengals and the over, 49ers in the under. There's your picks for Championship Sunday, along with College Basketball Saturday going tomorrow. 22 college basketball games, four NFL picks. That's a grand total of 26. Let's hit at least 15 of these and just keep rolling on. If you want to win big, you got to bet big, okay? To me, the action is the juice. Remember that scared money don't make money. There's money on the streets that can't be ignored. And finally, good luck to you.